Our next speaker is the co-founder and president of SCSA, Survivors of Childhood Sex Abuse. He is a survivor, victim, activist, advocate, and a true warrior in our struggles to find peace and justice for the survivors of sexual abuse. He's also a wonderful friend of mine, Mr. Richard Winman. Hello, thanks for having me. Uh, I know this is a work day and some of y'all had to take off, so I appreciate y'all coming out. Um, I am the co-founder and uh, president of SCSA. We're a nonprofit. We, uh, we advocate for and support uh, through peer-led support meetings um, adult victims of childhood sex abuse. That's, that's our core function. And we serve over 3,000 members, uh, and I hear all the stories. My, my story, very briefly, is that um, I, at a very young age, I was in the Boy Scouts of America, and it wasn't a Boy Scout troop, it was a front for pedophile ring, an international pedophile ring. And I was raped by many, many men. They would fly in from out of town internationally. Uh, they recorded me uh, through film and pictures. Today, today my, uh, my kitty porn is still on the dark web from the 70s. Um, policeman who investigated and busted them, he was the, uh, he was the, uh, commander of the pedophile unit in the New Orleans Police Department. After all that was done, uh, he kept an eye on me and uh, he eventually raped me. He was a pedophile. And then from there, uh, he would make me have sex with men so that he could make pedophile cases against them. So. And we're talking a span of abuse from seven years old to 17 years old. So I don't have repressed memories at all. Um, but what I do have is I have CPTSD. And I have anxiety. And I have major, major treatment resistant depression. And the way that I get through today is um, medication, peer led support groups. Uh, trauma-informed therapist that does advanced therapies like EMDR. Uh, the reason I mentioned this, uh, my story, is because I'm an expert on why people don't don't come forward until they're 52 years old, on average. Um, so in my case, uh, I was told that uh, nobody would believe me. Uh, it would be my fault. Uh, if I was believed, uh, uh, the police officer, Stanley Burkhart, uh, when I refused to go out and have sex with men, he put his service pistol in my mouth. Um, and so, you know, um, what, what these abusers do is they coerce, they threaten, well, they threaten my mom and dad too, they threaten, you're not going to be believed. Uh, this is a secret between us and in the church context. It's between us and God, and it's not a sin because you can't tell your parents. It's our little secret. Um, so, what happens is because it's a secret, you have this misplaced shame, guilt, and fear uh, as a doctor of the church. And uh, so, you don't tell anybody. Uh, you keep it a secret. Um, and I matriculated through life. Well, well uh, after my abuse stop, I, uh, I committed suicide. I say committed because uh, I, it, it wasn't a cry for help. I intended to die. And I wound up in a hotel, I'm sorry, hospital emergency room in a coma for five days. But after that, life got good. I had a brilliant academic career and just drifted through life, a brilliant professional career, wonderful family. You would think everything's okay. But 
at 52, the exact age, it hit me very, 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 very hard. And uh, I do what most uh, victims and survivors did, uh, self-medicate. Because you can't tell you can't tell anybody, you're not talking to anybody, so you have to self-medicate to stop the pain. And that's usually drugs. Al alcohol was my case, alcohol. Um, and eventually, when that stops working, and it does stop working, suicide. And we commit suicide en masse. En masse. We've lost three advocates in just the last year and a half. They, uh, these are guys that are well along on a healing path. They become advocates, they're professionals at this. And just one day they snap and they kill themselves. So um, that's it in a nutshell. Um, I I'll steal a, a line from Mike McDonald. Uh, Mike McDonald uh, said, ask any kid what the statute of limitations is. They don't know. You can ask a 25 year old what the statute of limitations is. They don't know. They have no idea that the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. And you know, uh, these victims and survivors, they deserve justice. And it's not just for the adult survivors, but this legislation will also affect our, our present children and our future children. And they deserve protection. This is a bipartisan issue. Everybody can get behind the idea that we need to protect our children. It's fundamental to who we are. Thank you very much.